Hello and welcome to Validated Build Promotions with Git, GitHub, and Jenkins. This is an interesting idea that's been asked by many of the students in the GitHub classes that I've been teaching recently, so I thought I'd put together a small screencast on how to accomplish this. I'm Matthew McCullough, trainer for GitHub on their GitHub classes, also instructor at many of their conferences on all things Git. Also, I'm very interested in Jenkins as a CI build tool. It's one of the most popular ones on the Java platform. I'm also interested in what can be done with GitHub, getting rid of hosting our own code, but still having an independence of full clones of the repository for durability and working offline efficiently. Jenkins will be the CI tool that we use today. We'll apply this Jenkins build and some of the plugins that integrate with Git to accomplish these build promotions. Why would we want to do this? First off, a lot of teams are already struggling with constant churn of the code base. Even worse, the QA teams feel the downstream effects of this. Even if they're harvesting binaries from a continuous integration server, they're constantly feeling the pain of getting a successful, then a broken, then a successful build, and sometimes they're unsure which ones to take, whether they should take it at all, whether there's bugs that are already known inside this, or whether it's even passed all the unit tests. Let's partition this into two separate repositories as a means of making this more efficient. First, let's set up the repos. The first one that we need to set up is development repo. We can do that easily at GitHub. Over here, I've set up a brand new repository called demo build promotion dev. I've got a little bit of code into it, a sample Maven archetype, just a simple project that includes a Java source file, a pom.xml, and a couple of unit tests. With that project set up, we now want to clone it. We'll grab this address, head to the terminal, and get clone the URL. We now have a spot to actually work with the code. This is a clone of the dev repository. We want to partition the code that succeeds up to a separate one. Here's a QA repository, demo build promotion QA. It's intended to only receive code that has passed unit tests by the CI server. We don't need to do anything with this URL as far as the command line. We're not going to directly interact with it. We're only going to use Jenkins to talk to this repository. Only certified code is going to be pushed in. Next up, with those two repositories set, the dev repo and the QA repo and the working copy, the one that we're actually going to change the code in, we next need to talk about Jenkins. We're going to add the git plugin, which can be done from the manage plugins page, and we're going to set up a brand new freestyle Jenkins job. A freestyle job allows us to create our own steps in the middle. In this case, we'll specifically target what Maven lifecycle events we'd like to call as part of the build process. We'll head over to the web browser for Jenkins, and we'll set up this project. Now, I've already got it configured, so I simply can demonstrate it to you by clicking on it and clicking on configure. It'll save the time of me having to type everything out again and allow me to just highlight the important configuration pieces. The GitHub project is just simply a link. It doesn't offer any additional functionality that we care about in today's class. The pieces that we care about are the URL of the two repositories. For the first one, it's the dev repo. I'll click on advanced and show you that it's filled in the default name of origin for the name of the repository. That's fine. We've left the ref spec at default, no configuration necessary. Under the second repository, the one for QA, we do want to do a bit of additional configuration, which is to change the name of the repo to QA repo. Branch that we'd like to have built. We'll assume master in this case. You can have all the branches built, but I'm typically focusing on just one, especially when we're talking about promotions. We'll have SCM pulled in this case, rapidly, so that we can give a demo here in the video. Five stars says poll every minute. In the build, 
I have one Maven top-level target invoked, simply the package command. There was a question about having incremental builds and whether clean was always necessary. You'll have to evaluate your own code base and whether or not you're removing classes as to whether it makes sense to clean out the target directory. In this case, I'm optimizing a little bit and not issuing clean in front of the package. You might need to. At the bottom is the git publisher. I only want to publish if the build succeeds. If the unit tests fail as part of the Maven execution, it'll stop the build and mark it as failed. This will only happen if the unit tests succeed as well as the compilation. I'm going to merge a particular branch, so to speak. We're not going to do any manual editing of that second repo, so really it's just a fast forward of pushing those changes. And we're going to push that master branch. We're going to push it to the QA repo. It's good to go. We can save that and now watch all of this actually function. We'll go to the top level of the project, promote to repo GitHub demo. We'll head over to our terminal window, look at our clone, and inside this project directory, make a small edit to the source code. We'll go into source, main, java, com, ambient ideas, app, and we'll make a change to this one. We'll head down a few lines, and at the beginning of this, hello world from CI again and again. We'll write and quit this Java file. We'll git commit it. And last, we'll push this code up to GitHub. That's to the dev repo, just to remind you again. Dev repo over here. Do a quick refresh and see changed output of main, the change that we just did. Over here on the QA repo, you'll see that this is still an older commit from a few minutes ago. It does not have that latest change. Let's toggle over to Jenkins. We'll now look at the git polling log. No changes the last time it checked, but in a minute it should find them. In fact, we'll see that as a job is started in just a second. It's now found those changes, changes found. In the build history, you can see that it's in the quiet period, waiting for making sure that there's no further changes coming down the pipeline. The build is now started, for which we could click on that and see the progress directly. The console output shows us that it's building, running the tests, and that was successful. And as a final step, pushing head to branch master at the QA repo. Let's have it, head over to GitHub, do a refresh, and notice that changed output of main was pushed up to demo build promotion QA based on the fact that the build succeeded. Let's break the build as a final step over here just to show the antithesis. Let's do another edit to that same app Java file. Let's head down to the end of the line and let's actually put something in the front that's bound not to compile. We'll put in a couple of symbols that certainly are not legal. We'll write and quit, and we'll do another compilation and commit over here, triggered by means of this commit message, broke the code. Yes, we already know we did it. And a git push to send that to the dev repo. Let's make sure that code was received by GitHub. Broke the code. It indeed was. Let's head over to our Jenkins installation and go to the top level of the project. We'll wait for the build to be kicked off after the poll of the repo detects it. That code was now detected. It's pending. It's in the quiet period. It's going to expire in a few seconds. And when it sees that no other changes have subsequently been put in, it kicks off a build. That build we can now monitor in the console, tail the log, and without a doubt, it fails. We need that. We broke the code. Build did not succeed, and the project is configured to only push after a successful build, so no pitching will occur. QA won't receive the code, and we could even set up another Jenkins server to build off of only this repository, producing builds only from the certified code and producing no false positives 
it only has the code that's already been certified by these automated steps. You're now promoting only builds that passed unit tests. This is a pretty cool accomplishment with such a small amount of setup. Two repos, a standard Jenkins build, and a push to the destination triggered only when the build is successful. If this was of interest to you, classes that include ideas like this are taught both at GitHub, myself being the trainer at the moment, github.com training online, and also in the series of videos that myself and Tim Berglund have recorded for O'Reilly, available at bit.ly slash ogitvid. I hope you've enjoyed this small tutorial on how to do promoted builds based on their success pushing to a second Git repo. Thanks for listening.